The MTS-3000 internal pipe version is a modification of the standard residual stress measurement system Restan MTS-3000. This version allows to perform a residual stress test inside pipes or tubes with a minimum diameter of 120 mm and a maximum depth from the edge of the pipe of about 300 mm. This second video is going to show how to connect and position this modified system and then how to make a complete measurement. Connect the MTS-3000 system as usual, including the air tube to the pneumatic fast connector. Connect the webcam located on the slide to the laptop computer through the USB cable. After this operation, run the RSM software installed on the computer and then open the iShot software. Put the two micrometric heads in the middle of the stroke, as you can see in the video. Center the reference lines on the software with the center of the string gauge installed, using the two knobs of the MTS-3000. After this operation, line up the drilling axis with the center of the string gauge by rotating the two micrometric heads of the distance indicated on the calibration certificate. Then approach the end mill to the surface and start the zero setting process as usual after you have connected the BNC cable. After setting the test parameters as usual, you can start the measurement. At the end of the test, lift up the end mill using the knob and then return to the zero configuration previously saved. As shown in the video, measure the whole diameter of both X and Y axis and also the whole eccentricity by using the MTS-3000 knobs and dial gauges.
In case the system is disassembled and assembled again, for example, if you need to move to another office or if you need to make on-site measurements, the translation distance of the micrometric heads may change. Therefore, it's important to check and verify them following the procedure described here below. Make a small trace on a flat surface with the end mill, just like you do when you have to calibrate the standard MTS-3000 optical device. Then, move the system in the two directions by using the translation distance written on the calibration certificate. After this operation, verify that these distances are still correct. If not, correct them by referring to the eccentricity values you have obtained. Finally, repeat points 1 and 2 until the new values you obtain remain constant.